let's talk now about images. So let me go ahead and just evaluate the cell, and then I'll, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll explain what the code is that we have here. So um, matplotlib, uh, in addition to being able to plot data, um, has a mechanism for reading and displaying digital images. So here what I'm going to do is I have an image called mandrel.jpg. Again, that file is in the same directory as this code. And I'm going to read that file using the matplotlib pyplot um, command imread. So img is now going to be an image. This image is represented and stored as a three-dimensional matrix. Um, XY, of course, corresponds to all of the pixels in this image, which in this case is 512 pixels by 512. And the third dimension is color. Uh, digital images are made up of three channels, a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel, which I'll show you a little bit more about in a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to ask for the size of the image, image.shape, um, and when I print that, you can see it's 512 by 512 by 3. So this is XY, that's the resolution of the image, and 3 is just the fact that it's a three-channel color image. Grayscale images um, are one channel, and sometimes you have a fourth channel with images, which is an alpha channel. We won't worry about that right now. I'm going to uh, create a figure to display this image. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to specify the size of the figure um, using the size that I just determined. Uh, so size is 0 is 512, size 1 is 512, and I'm going to divide that by 72, which is the 72 uh, dots per inch. So when you specify the size of a figure, it is specified in inches. And so if I have this many pixels and I divide by this many pixels per inch, I, I will get a measure of inches. Now, I said 72, it could have been whatever you want. So we just pick some size that you want. I like doing this conversion because it guarantees a certain resolution um, that the images will be displayed in. I'm gonna use the imshow command to display the image. And um, I'm going to, I didn't I turn off the axes right now because I wanted you to see how big the image is. But when I turn off the axes to display an image, which you typically do, because you typically don't need to see axes. It's not data, it's just an image. So I'll turn off the axes, and I just printed the size so we could see it here. So basics, imread will load an image. Uh, you have to create a figure of a specified size, and then you show the image using the imshow command. So it's just a simple way of bringing an image and displaying it. Now, as I said earlier, uh, images are made up of three ch color images are made up of three channels R G and B and we can extract those separately if we want as follows so IMG is again a three-dimensional matrix it has some number of rows some number of columns and then it has R G and B so I can tap into those um, red channel green channel blue channel by grabbing all of the rows and columns of the zeroth plane of the first plane and of the second plane. And you can see here that I've just plotted them. So again, I've got a subplot. Um, I got one, three, one, which means I'm gonna have one row and three columns. And then I'm gonna put something into the first slot, the second slot, and the third slot. So I'm going to im show the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And I'm gonna turn the axis off of everything. And this is what I get. So first of all, something slightly weird here is those images are in color. So why is that? If it's a red channel, it should just be a bunch of pixels. And the reason is, is that Python and MATLAB does this. They have a default color map. That is, they have a default mapping of image values to intensity or color that you see on the screen. And you, have, you can control that. So here what I've done is I've converted them into the appropriate grayscale as follows. So same thing as before, rip out the RGB channel, 0, 1, 2. Uh, three subplots here, and then show them with a C map or a color map of gray. So this color map simply, these are two-dimensional matrices. They have numbers between 0 and 255. Um, I can choose to map those to whatever color I want. Python defaults to some color map. You can change that default, and I would argue when you're looking at a grayscale image, for the most part, you should look at them as grayscale images. And, um, and, and so notice here, for example, that in the red channel, I'm going to scroll back up to the full image for a second. Notice here that the nose is red and the size side here is blue. Okay, so let's go down here. Notice in the red channel, there's a lot of red here. There's a lot of whiteness means there's a lot of value. 
darkness means there's not a lot. So for the, for the blue channel, there's not a lot of blue in the nose, but there's a lot of blue here. So the way to read these channels is when there's a bright value, it means there's a lot of that color, blue, green, or red. And when it's dark, it means there's not. So for example, in the eyes of the mandrel, there's not a lot of blue. And if we go there and look at it, we're like, sure, that looks sort of yellowish, not bluish. Okay, so uh, a couple more things. Um, color maps can be fun. You can do some, some cool things. This is also called false coloring. So when I can, um, so here I've taken the, I've converted the full image to a grayscale image by just taking a linear combination of the red, green, and blue channels. These weights are somewhat arbitrary. I could have just averaged them and I would have gotten more or less the same result. I'm going to display the image this time with a jet um, color map and I've turned on the color bar so I can see what is the mapping of intensity value to color. So you can see here that the low values go to blue, um, cold colors, the bright values go to red, hot colors. Uh, lots of different color maps you can do um, and so let me just show you a couple of examples of that. So here is the ocean color map where now the values go from this sort of uh, uh, green to uh, white or I can do an inferno color map um, and you go now from black to yellow. So this kind of false coloring is, you know, makes pretty picture, sure, but sometimes it's a nice way of visualizing the data. But I would argue you should always show this color bar because if I simply showed you the false coloring and I don't know what maps to map, what values map to what colors, it's not very meaningful. So get in the habit of showing the color bar so there's some meaning to the visualization in terms of the underlying uh, pixel values. All right, so a um, couple more things. Um, uh, when I uh, show the images, um, I'm going to show them here in uh, two subplots. I can play with the uh, color bar. So here I've taken the color bar and I've made it horizontal and I've set only uh, a couple of ticks. Um, so I, this example is really just to show you that you have a lot of control over the visualizations. Um, through programmatically. So here I'm showing uh, the image um, uh, uh, that you saw before with the jet color map. I've set the color bar with, it, with ticks just at 1, 100, 200, just to, so I can see the data clearly. Now here what I've done is I've changed the limits of where I am mapping things with the set C limb. So notice here that this image, of course, first of all, looks different than this image. And notice in the uh, color bar, you can see why. So here, the value 1 is being mapped to blue, and the value 200 is being mapped to red. Here, the value of 50 is being mapped to blue, and 150 is being mapped to red, which means everything between 1 and 50 got saturated at blue. Everything from 150 and up got saturated at red. And why would I do this? Because I want to, for example, emphasize this middle range of data. And I can do this by setting the limits of the intensity from 50 to 150, I get saturation at the dark and bright end, but I get more dynamic range in the middle and it allows me to explore the data uh, visually a little bit easier. All right, a couple more things to, that you'll need to know about uh, in MATLAB, uh, sorry, in MATPLOTLIB and with images is I can build histograms of images. So we saw how to build histograms of data, but images are two dimensional. And so what you have to do when you go to do a histogram is take the image, this is a gray image, so it's a two by two matrix of values, and you call the ravel command, which unravels the image into a one dimensional list. And now I can just compute a histogram with 256 bins in the range of zero to 255, which of course is the intensity range. And here you can see there's very few values um, in the, the, the low end, very few values in the high end, and this is what the distribution of underlying gray values is in that image. Uh, similarly, I can do this for the uh, individual uh, color channels. So again, I've got the RGB values, and now I'm going to unravel the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, and I can look at their individual uh, histograms. Okay, so the main things I need you to be able to know is how to load images and display images, and being very careful with the color maps and the limits to make sure that you are looking at what you think you are looking. Okay, that's it for now. I think we have all of the file I.O., the NumPy, the data visualization, and the image manipulation that we need. And now we're finally ready to get started on the second half of the course in data analytics. 
So I'll see you in a few minutes when we're ready to pick it up.